Hello, welcome to another of my new video. Today's video, I will be explaining to you the famous EMP drama circuit. This circuit itself does not make sense, as we can see on the top diagram, usually shown like by Tesla Undimir, all those German YouTubers first come up with that, which I seen. Uses a RF transistor, usually in the RSC case of 2078. In my case, I've used 1971, which can handle all the way up to VHF band, whereas the 2078 has high power rating, but only limited to the HF band. The 2SC series is usually produced by Mitsubishi in the RF application of RF amplifications, usually it requires us. As you can see, the pin output, in my case, the 1971 of the base emitter and collector, which I draw the diagram. If we inzoom this circuit diagram into this one, the entire application becomes make sense. As we can see here, we got a 1971 transistor C1971 mounted to a heat sink since the circuits produce quite a lot of heat and with a winding tutorial which I think at this, uh, I don't want to show in this video since it will take too long whereas you can see here a lot of turn windings on the primary coils and the secondary only have got a few numbers of turns but if we zoom that to 0 0.5 to 330 ratio, since we can see here, as we only complete half a turn, which give us 1 to 60 ratio, plus the RF oscillations will get quite a high voltage. RF voltage can be high, it does not have to have many turns. It's like previous time, I can make plasma flames just with few turns on the resonator. As long as it resonates properly, a very high voltage can also be generated in the RF frequency band. So we can see here a collector to emitter blocking capacitor, I guess, and with a 220 pico capacitor to pass the rest of the RF voltage to the primary coil. As we can see the LX, this gives us two independent inductors and this one has its own resonance frequency. Therefore, a lot of harmonics will be generated while so it can do the jamming operations, similar to Tesla coil but better. Since this one is in the RF band where Tesla coil usually is but sometimes much lower and this one generates much more harmonics. Harmonics usually in RF band is interference, which you try to avoid by adding a filtering circuit, which also uses L and C, inductor and capacitor. But in this case, that we want the RF interference of the harmonics. So we keep it like this. Here is a parasitic capacitance to the ground, where this end would be to the base, where the, this part, the circuit will be tuned to oscillate and this part its own closed LC resonance circuit. And one part of the component we forgot is this inductor choke. This one usually provides the extra RF couplings between the rest of the circuit, but this one usually self exists. You can, if you want, you can add its one in, just like this one, the RF choke, RFC. RFC usually will be used higher frequency, usually will be iron powdered ferrite. Here we can see a detection circuit. Since this circuit produces enough RF power to be powering all the way to light up fluorescence tubes, therefore it has enough power to light up LED for sure. Here we go, it's made in this configurations. You can see the cathode and goes to the uh, end of the LED which provides negative and positive rectification. This part and these two points act as the antenna of the entire circuit. And this is a green LED. And this one, which I've showed in many of my other RF videos, 
this basically is just a bulb filled with the Pennings mixture with some mercury vapors and this one just a regular CFL and this one is my RF indicators which is quite sophisticated since it uses the germanium diode with low forward voltage and amplifier circuit here. To test the circuit will be connected up to a power supply here. So therefore, we connect the positive to the collector pin, which you can see here, and the negative to the emitter pin. This circuit is now in theory oscillating. If we take a RF pin, you can see it start to light up. Means there's some RF going on. But this does not make it resonate properly until you put it so somewhere close or open the voltage a little bit higher. So therefore it can start self oscillating at its desired resonance. Mm. We need to open the voltage a little bit higher. Here we go. It usually requires some inductance kick in order to get it going on. So if we brought this close, you can see this start lighting up. Not too bright, but quite dim. But this is completely powered wirelessly by the RF induction. Here we have got a fluorescent tube just to press to tell you that there is high voltage present. See, it's light up. In the many of those videos they show about the EMP jammer. They always like to do a fluorescent tube lighting up. But I'm gonna just zoom closer and don't get your hope too high since this does not grow too brightly even though you can see it's glowing but not too bright. People don't like to tell you that because it seems to a bit ruin the fun but in reality the circuit does not grow as bright as you expect a CFL working in normal operations. That's just normal since the current inside the lamp is not high. But something interesting happens if we bring a mercury vapor bulb. Look, this one is much brighter than this one shown in the camera. But in reality, those two is about the same brightness. But if this has phosphor coating, this one will be much brighter since it makes a better cavity for the RF to ignite. And now we can smell the ozone. This bulb itself is broken, the filaments blown out and the electrode melt off, but I still managed to light it up since the vacuum is still there. So therefore, the EMP jammer will work normally. Now I don't want to bring this too close to my phone since it will destroy my phone quite easily or any other sensitive electronic device as well as I don't want to bring it too close to my power meter or else it might destroy it as well since there is a lot of RF harmonics in high voltage presence at the same time so there's a real danger of that let's zoom closer you can see yeah not too bright that's it for this video. Hope you like it. And if you do, I'm gonna tell you one thing. If this circuit does not seem to work in, you can try reversing the primary windings here in the diagram. It doesn't matter where the other many turn windings on that single wire is. As long as you keep one thing right, you flip the polarity between that capacitor and the ground pin, it should work fine. 
And one thing, the capacitor chooses to be larger values in kilovolts range in many other videos because of the high voltage generated during the oscillations. So therefore, if you want to apply high voltage, you see here, I'm only applying it to 9 volts. In many videos, it apply all the way up to 30 volts for higher powered operations. But the reason I choose it to the low voltage is I don't want to destroy a RF transistor, since in modern days, they are very hard to get hold of. And that's it. Thanks for watching.